Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the live stream for today's uh, very quick video. Uh, I think I just started a live stream like five minutes ago. Didn't have everything prepared and set up correctly. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to set up this live stream one more time. Hopefully I can get everything in order and make sure everything is perfect. Uh, what I am going to build out for you guys in today's video is probably what you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, and let me just switch back to the maximized version of the camera. So uh, I am going to build out the Slick Deals application uh, for a lot of you guys that aren't aware of what the Slick Deals app is. Uh, basically, you can find a lot of, uh, you know, different deals that are available online or probably in the store too. So I think most of you guys get the idea as to <laughs> what the heck Slick Deals is, right? Uh, the thing that I wanna be able to do in today's video is to use uh, a set of tools that I'm building out. I haven't, I haven't fully released it yet and it's called LBTA Tools. Uh, previously, I released something called LBTA Components, which I wanted to utilize, but I, I kind of realized that 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 library was turning into something that I didn't really want to continue with. So instead of using uh, components, I'm just releasing this thing called tools. Uh, why is this thing flickering? Stop flickering. Is it? Okay. All right, so anyone that has never done a live stream before, it does get really messy. Uh, stream health is yellow right now and everything else seems to be okay. So, uh, you are on fire today. No, just recently, uh, the last stream I did was totally not it. So I'm looking at the chat right now, everything looks to be fine. And uh, I'll get started in just a moment here. I think some of the people are, are just joining the chat now. They probably got the notification earlier and now they don't know what the hell's going on. So they're, they're like, they don't really wanna join the stream again. Anyhow, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to May 9th, oh my God. We've almost reached uh, halfway through the year. I guess it's only May, we have another month left. Uh, so hopefully you guys are uh, learning how to build applications together and I just want to be able to help you guys out. Uh, today's video, I'm going to focus on putting together a application very, very easily using the set of tools that I just previously announced will be available. You guys can check it out at the website actually. So let me show you what the library looks like first and then I'll get into the coding. All right, so let's turn into the code mode. So what's up Alex C, Merjal, Becker, Bacher, Jason, Ritsky. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Reitzke, is that a German? Uh, that sounds German. Uh, Xerxy. Uh, Aniko Mukala Becker, Jean, Jean Batiste Dominguez, Hargar, Andele, 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 Gumeri, Jean Batiste, Sai Gandhi, Alex C, Stan Toju, Jason, Rayetsky, yes, that is German. Man, I am on today. Uh, today's beer of choice is called uh, Laguna IPA, Indian Pale Ale. Uh, Lagunitas, I think that's how you pronounce this. Um, so no one's complaining about the sound. So sounds like things are working correctly. Okay, now, 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 now. What do I do? Okay, let me show you my Chrome browser right here. So the set of tools that I'm going to be using and probably from now on, uh, moving forward, uh, I want to make applications that are fun and interesting and most importantly of all, you know, applications that are fairly sophisticated. And 
the problem with building all these apps is we always deal with like a lot of boring UI code that I hate to type out. So uh, long story short, I'm putting out this set of tools here called LBTA tools. Um, there are three things that I want to take care of. Uh, we want to be able to lay out things using stack views very easily. So one line of code can actually do this. Uh, something, you know, very typical layout like that. You can lay it out using H stack. I'll go over how to do this in today's video. And then here's a more complicated layout, which is also very simple. Just three lines or five lines of code here. And you can read the rest of the documentation, but basically it's just a set of tools that helps you create these list views very, very quickly. So it's just a couple of lines and bam, you get entire list and everything inside of here is like dynamic. You can modify the cells and add things into it as you wish. Uh, so all in all, uh, if you want to play around with the tools and look at the example project, you can feel free to visit this URL and you'll get a taste of what it has to offer. Uh, what is the advantage of this over SnapKit? So this is not to, uh, so the tools, LBTA tools is not a replacement for SnapKit. Um, I, I still highly, highly recommend that you do use SnapKit if you want a set of layout, uh, layout framework, like a framework that helps you lay out things more efficiently, go ahead and use SnapKit. That's prob probably the better way of doing things. Um, my, my coding style, uh, I don't, yeah, you know, whatever. You know, layout code is pretty trivial. You can do, do, do it uh, any way that you want, really. Oh, I think I'm stuttering a lot today. Must be the beer. I'll blame it on the alcohol. Okay, LBTA tools. All right, so uh, does the library have support for stack views in iOS 8.0? Uh, no, this library is built on iOS 9.0. So if you're still building applications for iOS 8, I don't know what to tell you. You, you should probably not. If you, if you can get away from iOS 8, I would advise that you do so. ASMR coding. Does that mean I'm too close to the mic? Probably. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure you guys can hear what the heck I'm doing. So now that all of that is out of the way, uh, let me see. Man, it's getting hot in here. Uh, I'm drinking while you're fasting. Woo, fairy, I am sorry. Must be, must be a bummer watching someone enjoy their alcohol of choice. I find that for these live streams, if I'm <laughs> because I swallowed the beer, I'll take that as a good thing. Swallowing the beer, the noise that that makes, mm. very satisfying. All right, so let's get this show on the road. Uh, as you can see, I have a very simple slick deals project created, has a view controller inside of it. Um, we have the preview on the window in the middle, and then we have the simulator on the right side. So that means I'm pretty much ready to start banging out this code here. Uh, let's begin with a very simple list controller. So let's call this the slick deals uh, list controller. And you know, you can subclass UI collection view controller like we always do or some kind of table view controller, bang out all that boilerplate code and get your list going. But uh, we're not gonna do that in today's video. Instead, we are gonna do something a little bit quicker. So let's call it the uh, list controller. As you can see, nothing really comes up. So let's import the LBTA tools, type out this controller. So there's two controllers, one with a header and one it's just a regular list. So let's use this one because I don't need the header. So, and whenever you declare this controller, you just have to declare what kind of cell you want. So instead of, you know, talking about this all that much, let's call this the deal cell for one of these cells here. And this guy will be a list cell like so. Now these guys are generics instead of here. So this is a cell that is going to render out a string. I'm going to eventually change this to render out a deal 
you know. It, it seems like we have some trolls here. Okay, so uh, let me just say item. So this is override this guy. Did set. I just want to show you that I can change the background color to be whatever I want. So let's bang out a red cell. Uh, this guy, we just have to provide the deal cell and then the actual item that the cell is going to render. So it's a string here and a string here. Uh, viewed it load, super viewed it load. And the last thing I want to do is to declare an array of items. So, you know, one, two, uh, you know, you can type whatever you want inside of this list here. So once you have this list going, you're going to run it and you'll get a list of cells, but obviously you want to change your root view controller, slick deal, so that and run. So I don't really like using this as the root. So let's use a navigation controller, uh, root view controller, and then that instead. You know, this way you can get something anchored at the very top. It's rather nice to have a navigation bar. If you don't have one, everything just looks kind of off, right? So navigation item, title, so title equals uh, slick deals. And there you go. Uh, you just need the cell that you want to render out, which is this red cell thing. And then you run your code, you have your list really easy. You don't have to deal with the number of items, cell for item, and this array right here that holds your items. You don't have to deal with that. It just comes for free. Okay. Now, one thing that's, you know, kind of annoying is you want to override this, uh, not override, but conform to the flow layout. That way you can provide some sizing. So you can't really avoid this all that much. You just have to type it out, view frame dot width and let's say 50 uh, is it 50 maybe 80 is closer so this is gonna be really really quick I could probably do this in 20 minutes if I didn't have to talk about this the whole time and here you go you have your red cells spanning left and right nothing <laughs> nothing too fancy here so we are gonna go ahead and try to render out these cells correctly so let's say the image view on the left side, uh, UI image view. You know, I don't really like this, so let's say UI image, UI image view. And you have a lot of these different options using tools. Uh, let's use this one right here with a nil and content mode of scale aspect fill. So that's what I'll do. Let's say deal name, uh, name label equals UI label. And this guy comes with a bunch of parameters. This is just a convenience method. So let's say a uh, Porter cable 20 volt max. Uh, I wish I had one of these tools, but I don't. Uh, let's say font uh, bolt system font of 14. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, text color and dot white. So how's the stream doing? Uh, let's see, I can, I can close this guy out of the way here. Let's see, okay, we have 72 people in today's stream. Hope you guys are doing well today. You made it to the live stream, Philip Carlino. I'm glad to, glad to see you today. Uh, okay, where the heck am I? All right, now that I have my deal cell with the image view and name label, let me remove the red color. Maybe let's say dark gray as the background here. Uh, why don't I also say collection view dot background color equals color literal. I really hate having to like select this little box here. It takes like five different clicks. Sometimes you never really get the color either. Is it this? No, it's this. So that's the gray color. Is that black? That's probably black. I should just use black. Um, and now let's copy this. And okay, so that at least works. Sometimes Xcode just gives you the worst problems. Luckily, when you're working in Xcode nowadays, things are like not that buggy anymore. Way back in the day, uh, at least about, I don't know, like three or four, four versions of Xcode, 
um, in the past, those are extremely buggy. And now things are like a lot easier. So uh, to lay out this stuff, I want to lay out this image view and then this name label on the right side. So, you know, it's really easy if you use some kind of horizontal stack and that's what I'm gonna do here. So let me just use an H stack is what I'm going to call it. The views inside of it will be the image view and then the name label like so. Now you won't be able to see the image view. Uh, is that true? Okay, let me just grab this image here. So I'm gonna use command shift four to steal this image. Hopefully Slick Deals is not too mad about that. So that's what I have. And we are going to open up the assets here. Uh, let's call this the Porter Cable. Da, 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 da. You know, this process is, uh, I got this little circle there, but whatever. Uh, it's kind of bothering me. <laughs> okay, so let's turn off the mouse click and do this one more time. You know, whenever you're building out projects and you get these little details that start to really annoy you, that's when you know you've been programming for a really long time and you can't really deal with these little minor details that aren't perfect. It really gets to me. Okay, so we are good. Uh, let's use this thing here. So I just did that video on this guy and hopefully this works. So that, are you gonna come up? Yes, so that looks good. And okay, so I'm gonna stack these two views horizontally and all you have to do is call H stack, which is horizontal stack and bam, there you go. So, you know, this is really ugly. And one thing I'll do first is I'll call this thing with margins. So it's basically horizontally stacking this with a margin. I think I just wanna say all sides of I think eight, you'll see what it is. It's, I don't know, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, hopefully. So you have eight on the left, top and bottom. And then, so I don't like how this is 80. Let's bump this up to 100. This way you can see what's going on at least. Uh, command shift four, yes. So this guy is that, I think I'll say, uh, with width of, let's see, 80. Is that what I want? Uh, I think that's fine. Uh, no, this is gonna do something bad. Okay, so dot with width. Uh, I think I'll say with size. So that and 80 by 80. That way the image view is going to just have 80 by 80. Um, and there you go. There's probably a lot of different ways that you can do this, but that's what's happening. So you'll get a lot of these layout anchor inconsistencies, which is kind of annoying, but uh, I'm not sure what I can do about that right now. Uh, okay, so that looks good. Uh, Alignment.center. I think I might be able to pull that off. Okay, so the problem with stack views and just layout anchors in general is that if you don't get it correct, then you get this huge warning about your stack views. I'm sure a lot of you guys have encountered this problem before. So like I'm pretty familiar with what the warnings are related to, so I know how to fix it correctly. Um, but yeah, this is, oh my God, this alignment is so annoying. So that's what the code looks like. And yeah. All right. So as you can see, you can just horizontally stack things like this. The alignment's over here. If you want to include some spacing, let's do eight. So we're horizontally stacking these two views, image view, name label. We are going to include spacing of eight between these horizontal items. When you align it to the center, everything is just centered in the middle. So if you turn this thing into like 200, you'll see that the stack view is going to 
encompass the entire cell. And because everything is aligned to the center, that's that's what you get. I don't know. It's kind of magical the way that it just magically works out. But once you understand the tricks of the stack view, you can apply these very simple techniques and you'll get it kind of working like that. Now, if you want to further lay out things on the right column, you can actually present another stack view. So what I mean is I can say, let's say the price label equals UI label uh, text. Let's see, that was $35. And we're going to use uh, font, bold system font. Is that bold? Yeah, let's say bold, 18. Hmm, that looks a little large. So we'll do that. And we'll say text color uh, green. I think that's green. So a price label. And now that I have this, I can just call a regular stack, name label and price label. And get rid of, I think I can get rid of that. So get rid of that. And I should be good to go. So we're horizontally stacking the image view. And then we have the second view, which is this thing here. Let me get a space. So that's kind of how it works. So it's basically a UI framework. And uh, the code is all available on the website. Where did you go? Okay, so it's all available here. Um, it kind of goes over how to use this stack thing. Each stack does this. And that's the idea. Uh, it does kind of take a while to get used to, but uh, everything that you need, basically everything that you need in UI code for iOS can be accomplished using some version of a stack view. Uh, you really need to realize why that is before this library becomes <laughs> like helpful. But once you realize that everything is like horizontally and vertically aligned, then you're pretty much good to go. You can just horizontally stack things and vertically stack other things within other stack views. And it's really easy. So let's let's say we want to introduce this like new label right here, right? So let's say new label equals UI label text. Uh, let's see, I don't have a background color parameter. So I guess I'll have to do this the old way. So new is new. Uh, font, no, font, let's see, bold, bold, no, it doesn't look bold. Let's use regular system font of a weight, and let's say 10, and what is the weight here? That looks really thin, let's say medium for the weight. Um, and then text color is white, I think that's good. So new label, I think I need to set the background color equals Oh God, let's take this, this, bam, double click. If someone can tell me an easier way of picking these freaking colors, that'd be nice. I don't think there's an easier way. All right, so background is that. I'm going to stack this inside of this. So name label, price label, and the new label. And you should be able to get everything lined up correctly on the left side. And there you go. So that's the name label. Uh, okay. So you'll often, <laughs> so B-H-L-V-O-N-G is not my Twitter account. Uh, you can follow me at build that app. You should be able to find me. And yes, uh, Alex C, nesting stack views helped me streamline UI development so much. I find that to be the case as well. If you're not using stack views in 2019, you're doing your UI, you're, you're probably adding a lot of constraint code that's totally not worth it. You can see this view right here is just this line. Literally just this line with some settings modified and you're good. Uh, is it possible to use playgrounds to try this tool? Uh, no. I guess if I made it like a Swift package manager project, which I'm not going to do, if I did that, it might be possible, but I don't plan on doing that. All right. 
So for this new label, uh, let's fix it, why don't we? <laughs> Okay, so there's a trick to doing all this all the time. So I'm gonna center it and I'm going to give the, the, the new label. So you can say like with, 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 it's kind of hard to say, but with, with, of let's say 40. And that's gonna have this one with, obviously, right? With, with, maybe there's a better name, but uh, you can see that now it's center, but it doesn't respect the 40. And the reason, is because just by default, everything in, in a stack view will will take it and then expand the orthogonal axis. That's why it's taken up all that space. So there's a couple of ways to deal with this. <laughs> Let me show you the way that I know of. So name label, price label, new label. And why don't I take this and apply an H stack and UI view. So so now we're getting to the territory of just stacking things and stacking other things. And so we have this UI view on the right side that's taking up the rest of the remaining space. It's basically what's happening. Uh, corner radius of, I don't know, what is this, like two? Hmm, what is this, maybe five? Why is that? Corner radius not showing up. Is it because of the clips to bounds? Maybe it's a new label, that layer. No, mass, clips to bounds, it goes true. That orange color doesn't look right either. Okay, so this looks a little off. And let's just say that of three. So the new label, okay, let's go with height of, let's say 20. Can't really tell how much that is. That's probably like 14 or 16. So that's what that does. Let's, uh, let's say 16. I don't know. You can, you can do whatever you want, really. Okay, so this looks okay. Uh, for the stack view, I don't like the spacing. This green is <laughs> way too bright. So the price label, let's take you over here, replace that sucker, and follow this trick of slowly mousing over the color. That's what we'll do. So this guy, I would like to say spacing of eight, four, okay, four. And there we go, well, the spacing looks a lot better. I feel like this price label can use something else. This font is really small. Uh, system, system, font of size, okay, of size 16. Uh, weight of heavy, is that how you type this good at? Okay. Okay, this looks, 16 looks right. Maybe it's like 17. You guys ever spend time just guessing at font sizes? I know I do. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's see what happens when you type out this text here fully so that it encompasses the entire width of the cell here. So lithium ion, one fourth inches is how you do inches, okay. Impact driver kit. So. It's going to take only one line because labels are only one line. So you can also specify number of lines in here to be two. So at the very max, this label on the top is gonna to be two lines of code. And as you can see, everything is coming together uh, rather nicely. We don't have those huge closure blocks where we declare all of our labels and you know, that stuff can get really messy. This is how I prefer to see my code. I really don't like seeing those long blocks. And <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you missed out on the earlier parts of today's video, everything is uh, included inside of LBTA tools. Uh, I don't really want to support the components library anymore because I don't, I don't like some of the things inside of it.
even though I wrote it. I don't really like it. So uh, I'm, I'm modifying, or I'm in introducing this tools library because it's shorter and you don't have to say as many syllables. Okay, so how much further do we want to go with this is the question. Image view dot layer dot corner radius equals four, five, four. Not really sure there. Cool. Uh, that that looks good, right? That looks good. The image view. This image is really pixelated because we're using a really small version of 1x. We should really have a larger resolution. It'll look better, obviously. So it's pretty easy, right? How many lines of code do we do we take here? We have our cell, and then we have our item. Now, this is obviously some dummy data, which is not that interesting. So what do I want to do with this circle here? Do I want to render out this blue circle? Maybe. OK, let's see. How do we do this blue circle here? So there's a name label. And how do I want to deal with that circle? Okay, I feel like the spacing here is a little off. So let me take 12. Maybe this is 10, and this could be like 16. Looks solid and super easy. Most importantly, the code is super easy to read. Indeed. So the only, only thing that I don't like about this library is that sometimes this stacking can get a little gnarly. Like looking at it right now is not that bad. So you can reduce this to uh, with size uh, in it, 40 by 16. Even that, that, that looks even worse than what I had before. So let's keep it as with width and with height. Uh, I feel like Swift is a little bit too verbose in regards to the parameter names and what you have to type inside of your, your functions. So I'll keep it as that. And let's see. Do I want to deal with this blue circle? How would I even do this blue circle here? Maybe I can. Maybe I can do something. How about if I just draw a circle? So if you need to lay out things the old school way, you can still do it. So let's say let blue circle view equals UI view. So this, I have this thing, uh, this constructor with a background color now, which is always much easier than setting up the freaking background color on another line. So this guy doesn't want to work. So click yes. Okay. Now let's do it the old school way of add set view, blue circle view. But you can actually put this on the right side if you use a stack view. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, let's do that. So we have the blue circle view here. And uh, so we're horizontally stacking things. This is the first component. This is the second component. And then, no. This is the second component. And then this is the third component. So let's use a vertical stack view with the blue circle view with the height of, let's, let's use eight for now. And then we use a UI view. And that way on the right column, we'll have this third column with the blue circle view. And it'll look like that. So you can get really crazy with stacking I don't, I don't recommend stacking more than like 10 things inside of each other, but there's really no reason why you can't. So let's say, so why is this guy doing this? So you have a view 
it's vertical. So you gotta view it as that. Uh, I wonder why it's centering this thing here. Okay, so if I pop in another UIV, I wonder what that does. Maybe something's wrong with my library. Hmm. Hmm. I think that because everything is centered. Because everything is centered. That's why it's doing this. Because everything is centered. That's a problem. That is a problem. I wonder how would I deal with this? I believe if I take away the centering, it might work. So I just want to confirm this. So pretty sure it's the centering. Yeah, so the centering really screws, uh, screws things up for us. So I guess I'll leave off the centering for now. Uh, with height, why does this look off? With width of eight. With height. Okay, hmm. okay. I'm kind of sort of just doing doing things on the fly now. Okay, since it's eight. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. And there we go. We have our circle at the very top there. Not too bad, right? Kind of surprised I was able to do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we have this 119 thing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's just do this just for comprehensiveness, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, original price label equals UI label. Let's say 119.99.99. Uh, this, I think we just want regular. And this is probably a red. That's a standard red. Um, you can apply the strike through by using a NS attributed string, but I don't know exactly the code for that off the top of my head. So I think I'll not do that today. Okay. And yeah, that's what that looks like. Uh, uh, spacing. Spacing is four. Font size of this guy is, let's say, 10. And I don't know, if it, it might be centered, unfortunately. Wow, that's not good. So this guy, let's say, medium for a thicker red. Let's bump it up to 12. And then we can say, Okay, we're going to use a spacer UI view. Okay, so we have the 119 there, and we have these things, and yeah, looks really good. Looks really good. You might want to be able to take this and put it out here. Might simplify this. I don't know. Seems to be okay. So again, we're just stacking things horizontally, vertically, horizontally, horizontally, vertically. And the magic of all these stack views allows you to do all this. <laughs> so Alex C says it really, uh, okay, let me start from the very beginning of Alex C's message. He says that definitely, and if you're a person using IB, which is uh, stands for Interface Builder, imagine all of the constraints all over when not 
using a stack view. Uh, well, not using a stack view is giving me a headache just even thinking about it. Yeah, me too. Stack view handles like a lot, a lot of the constraints you don't want to specify manually. So yeah, it looks easy and the code is easy to read. Um, I'm refactoring one of my projects and it's a nightmare. Nightmare. Uh, I should have aimed for a clean code from the beginning, but instead I uh, kept saying I'll do it later. Uh, best advice I can give anyone who is developing a project, uh, code clean from the beginning, don't say you'll ref refactor later. Yeah, uh, I always refactor whenever I'm done with a particular feature. So. If something looks like it's done, then then it's done. Most of the time, it's never done until you apply at least like four or five different uh, refactoring iterations on that chunk of code. That's what I find. Okay. Now that we have our list going, maybe I'll work on the search bar or this top featured front page popular. I think I've done that before. So maybe I'll skip that for today's video. Let me know in the chat if you want to see that. It's it's just a horizontal list. Maybe you can use a stack view. Mm, yeah, maybe just use a stack view. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. So everything is now like hard-coded code, hard-coded code. And obviously you don't want to do that. Instead, you want to use some kind of model object or view model object, whatever you want to choose. I'm going to call this the deal object and it has a couple of strings. So the name string, the price, original price, uh, the image name. So they're all just string variables. And so once you have this deal variable or this declared model object, for the list controller, uh, you have two things that you want to establish inside of your list almost always, right? You want the actual cell that's going to draw out your item. And then you want to declare what that item is. Now we're using a string just because, you know, that's what we set up as dummy code. So instead of using a string, I'm going to use the actual model object, which is a deal. And once you do that, this whole code will kind of blow up on you. You have to make sure that this cell that you declare, which is this guy up here, you want to make sure that the actual generic object that is representing uses this same uh, object instead of here. So once you do that, everything looks good. Now you can redeclare your items uh, array and just set it equal to these objects here. You'll see that when you type in init, you'll automatically get this deal object because it's referencing this generic here. So it might be kind of hard to understand, but the magic helps you deal with all this so that you don't have to think about it. And the name is, uh, let's say, Porter Cable 20 volts. Let's just type this again. Lithium batteries, ion, uh, one fourth inch and impact driver kit. So, let's see, 35. You can probably use doubles for this. Probably a better idea, but for the sake of time, I think I'm just going to use strings. And this is 119. And this, I think I call it the Porter Cable. Okay, okay, okay. So obviously the next thing you want to do is to declare a couple of different objects. And we will use uh, Mario Kart 7. Man, I haven't played Mario Kart in forever. I don't think I played Mario Kart after the Super Nintendo version, which maybe some of you guys don't remember the Super Nintendo. That was an awesome gaming console system. And because I'm older, I know about the Super NES. Uh, you guys are probably more on the 3DS and the Wii. And is there something else? The Wii U? Is that, is that what they call it? The Wii U? What's the newest Nintendo system called? Uh, let's see, this is $20. No, this is $29.99. <laughs> Man, games are kind of expensive. <laughs> uh, 
uh, I used to play Mario Kart. Um, I think my favorite character was either Bowser or Mario. Maybe Donkey Kong was pretty good too. I, I know the worst character is probably Toad. And then you have Princess is pretty bad. Was there like a Koopa character? So Toad and Princess, I always hated playing as those two characters. Luigi was okay, but I feel like Mario was better in almost every regard. I think Luigi had a, a longer jump. They were pretty much basically e equal. I just feel like Mario was faster. Maybe, uh, maybe I can play Mario Kart for you guys. <laughs> Uh, say Nintendo, Nintendo, Switch, Digital. So for those of you guys that are like really young and haven't played Mario Kart for the uh, Super Nintendo, you guys should give it a try. That's pretty much what started all of the, uh, the current rage and craze over Mario Kart. Like Mario Kart original for Super Nintendo was just the best. Okay, so let's say 7.50. And so I'm not really rendering up that. So I'll just say original price is blank. Okay, let me try to run this now. And uh, you'll see that this item string right here is wrong. Uh, so here's what I'll do. I wanna take all this code and this is all just like a view setup code. Right, we're setting up the views. So instead of using it inside of the item override, let's call setup views and call super setup views. And instead of here, let's set up all that code. This just belongs on a list cell. This way I don't have to override the initializers, which is really kind of painful. Okay, so let's remove the item and type it again. So every list cell has an item on it and it knows that it's a deal because of this generic right here. So again, the power of generics, a little magical, but if you write a library yourself, you'll, you'll, you'll get a better understanding. Uh, item deal. So let's say name label dot text equals item dot name, uh, price label dot text equals item dot price, original price label dot text equals item dot original price. Um, 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 uh, image view dot image equals UI image dot named and item dot image image name. Okay, so I think everything's working except for the image view because I don't have these assets. And you'll see that it does this, which Kind of sucks. Okay, so I don't want it to do that. How can I fix that? How can I fix that? Oh God. Okay, so let me try this alignment equals dot uh, top. Is that what I would do? Okay. So I know a lot of you guys have never messed with this alignment variable on a stack view, but the alignment is so powerful that if you don't know about it, you won't really appreciate how a stack view just lets you do crazy things like this, right? Now, now you see Mario Kart is aligned up here. All of these items are aligned right under it. Hopefully you guys can appreciate the the work that goes into creating these stack view uh, UI stack view classes from Apple. They spend a lot of time on this stuff. Uh, you know, making it able to support all of these different configurations for your layouts, like very, very easily. This stuff is, is awesome, man. Just awesome. So let's see, the last thing I'll do here to wrap up these cells is the image. Okay, so let's turn off this mouse click and let's just grab this sucker here and grab that. 
Hey, I'm just waiting for the screenshot. Oh no, I have a mouse in it. <laughs> I don't want that. You know, that's fine. I don't think this is just a example of what we want to do anyways. So let's do, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. Okay, that's better. So assets here. Uh, what is this, a switch? No. Okay, that, that, so that, that. Cool, I think we're good to go here. Uh, image name, Mario Kart. This here, sorry if I'm not like talking a whole lot. Uh, switch, but trying to program and talk at the same time is extremely difficult. Okay, so we're gonna run this. Uh, stream Mario Kart, let's play those games, channel number recommendation. Yeah, oh, Yoshi, yes. Uh, did I like Yoshi? I think Yoshi was pretty bad too. I think Donkey Kong and Mario and Bowser uh, the best characters in the game. Okay, so see how easy that was? You see how easy this stuff is? Like, if you build out these applications and you find yourself repeating code all the time and you find yourself writing out layout that's extremely hard to look at, then you can always refactor your code somehow, some way to improve it either for yourself or for someone else on your team. Um, using a stack view for everything inside of your cell is almost always a good idea. It's pretty rare that you, you won't be able to find a use case for a stack view. So if anything, um, if you take away anything from this video, make sure you're using a stack view. Uh, Bowser and Luigi, Luigi got stars in first place. <laughs> I don't remember that. I know Bowser was definitely my, probably, if I were to bet money on playing Mario Kart, Bowser would be the character that I would choose. I think the problem with Donkey Kong is that he, the, when you turn with Donkey Kong, um, his turns are so wide and slippery that when you do the power slide, like you don't do it correctly, you might fly in this direction that you don't want to fly in. So that's why I like Bowser. His jumps, his jumps weren't as like crazy. The problem with um, Bowser and Donkey Kong is that their acceleration is so slow that if, if you ever get stuck on the wall or anything, you're gonna lose your time. But if you're good, then you won't get stuck on those obstacles. Man, I used to play all day. I used to play all day and all night with my brother. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah. So what is it that you want to see now? the 63 of you that have not left yet. <laughs> Alex, he says, definitely need to do some deeper research into generics. Hasn't fully clicked for me yet. Yeah. So if you open up, pause, maybe I'll make this project a download. I might send this out as a email blast to everyone on the email list. And that should include the project in a zip format for you to download. Let's see, let's see, let's look at list controller. I think I might need to fix this to say LBTA list controller, but. So basically here's the declaration of this class. It includes, let me just close this, might be easier to read. Uh, the list header controller contains three generics that you can declare. The first one is the T generic, which means that 
the variable t, uh, it has to subclass some kind of list cell. And you can think of this as a generic, like a collection view, collection view cell. And then it also must take in a generic. So u is actually the second generic that you pass into the declaration. And u is essentially the items. And so the way that we're using u here is uh, the collection view is going to, you know, maintain a list of stuff all the time, right? And then that is just a list of u objects. Now it doesn't know what u is until you declare it after the fact. And that's what makes this dynamic. And uh, as you can see, number of items in the section is just items.count. So you might be thinking about other, like some use cases that this doesn't support. So if you have a complicated list with multiple sections, a lot of different cells, then this is not going to work. Uh, but I find that I would say 80% of the time you can get away with a simple list of items and you can render out a header as well. So let's say, for example, you want to render out this view right here. You would just include some kind of header and you should be done. And this view is pretty much one of these views here. So let's say we're inside of this application. You want to show the list of messages. You have your header up here and somewhere down here you have a list of messages, right? So on top of that, uh, inside of these messages or these other lists, this is also like the same list. We have messages and we have these message cells. Yeah. So how can you call a function at a, at a specific time every day? I remember I used to have that question all the time too. Like, how can I set up a box that just fires off a function? Well, you, yeah, you would use either AWS or some kind of EC2 machine or Heroku machine, or even use your own computer really. Just set up some kind of loop. Yeah, cron job is what that's called. Okay, so what do I want to do for the rest of today? Uh, I think I'm done. I don't really want to configure this, this navigation bar. Do I? I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Uh, if you want to find out this header, Eduardo. Tavares, uh, just bought the app store course. Cool. Now, thank you, man. Yeah. I noticed your, your purchase like earlier today and I hope you like it. If you liked the rest of the courses, then you'll find that that one's also very helpful. Uh, let's see see. So one question that I have is that I, I want to start using this library to just speed things up. And I know a lot of you guys might have started watching these tutorials, learning how to build out these controllers, these list views, and how to lay out things programmatically, right? Now, I can speed things up and just use this library. And that way you don't have to watch me build out layout code. So let me know if you want to, if you want things slow, slowed down because I've done this a thousand times and I, I don't want to, I don't want to have to lay out the code manually. I would rather use these libraries to make my life easier and to help you out so that you don't have to deal with all that boring code. So like this, right? This, these helpers are very helpful, obviously. And these stack views, while it might take a while to understand, they, they should be very helpful for you. And also this should 
get you in the habit of using stack views whenever possible, which is almost always. So I, I would love to do more with the courses, but the major thing that's really holding us back is setting up all this boring code. I don't know if you find it boring. I, I find it kind of boring. Anytime I'm doing UI, I just find it very tedious. Maybe you don't. I do. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. I feel like the next time I have to talk about a list, like some kind of list controller thing again, if I had to talk about how to register a cell and override number of items, number of cells, cell for item, if I would do that one more time, I, I, I feel like I'm gonna go crazy. So please update the Instagram course, at least teach us pagination. So there are some pagination lessons in that course. Now the problem with Firebase, real-time database pagination is when, when Firebase built out real-time DB, they didn't really want to support pagination. So this is obvious when you look at Firestore, there's actually like a mechanism for you to paginate through Firestore, uh, like Firestore data. So there's like a, a page variable in, in Firestore. So if you're looking for pagination, like the Tinder course, I show you how to use pagination correctly. And maybe I'll do it, uh, do a video on this channel also. Uh, so, okay, so let me see. Um, any of the basic stuff, just gloss right over it. There are a million tutorials on those. Exactly. I, I feel the same way. There's like, there are other people's tutorials and there's already a hundred videos on this channel with the boring UI code. So I like to gloss over that as much as possible. It's just boring UI code that you have to, you just have to look at it for a while and you'll understand it. Um, Philip says, yeah, do it quickly. We can look on GitHub at your tools and learn for ourselves. Okay, so that's good. Uh, Ahmad says, amazing work on the tool. I love how doing the courses we did the setup programmatically. So many times you can do it with your eyes closed after looking, uh, after completing the three projects from your site. Yes, that is correct. I just don't want the new users on both this channel and the website to to feel overwhelmed with the library. And uh, I want to teach everyone how to use this library so that we can do things quicker. I can teach server code if I didn't have to go through these damn lists all the time. Uh, so Edison says, how do we transfer database to Firestore? What's, uh, and so that's what you, yeah, that's what Firestore is. They have this call, like Firestore supports pagination natively. There's an actual pagination call with some kind of next variable. Um, there's a lesson on the Instagram, uh, the Tinder course on how to use Firestore pagination. I know you probably don't have access to that course so uh, obviously go buy it. <laughs> um, Firestore has documentation on how to, how to use pagination and it's fairly easy. Uh, what else do I want to say about that? I think I'm, I guess in terms of transferring database, to Firestore, real-time DB to Firestore. Mm. There's no easy migration for that, unfortunately. Uh, if I had to write a script to transfer all the data over, 
That would be a pain in the ass to write that script. <laughs> yes, Alex says, definitely buy the course. You won't regret it. If everyone bought all the courses on the website, I'd, I'd just retire. And I would go away, live on an island somewhere, and drink beer. Have a nice beer in the morning. Have a beer at lunch. Have a beer during dinner. I would turn into this major fat cat. Maybe just sit on the beach, uh, have a massage every day, turn on the computer, learn whatever programming language I want to learn, not have to teach anyone how to program. I don't really like teaching so much. I like recording myself programming more than I like teaching people how to program. I think that's why I, I'm able to sustain this channel because I like watching myself because the narcissistic side of me likes to review my own coding style that's that's the major inspiration for this channel the motivation and catalyst you'd miss me I, I maybe i'd start like a vlogging channel where i just vlog my days on the beach drinking uh bottomless bottles of alcohol and imbibing on liquids that would make even the most hedonistic lifestyle livers jealous i don't know if that made any sense uh okay so mod says what is the most fascinating part of coding you love to focus on as you feel ui is boring uh so i actually like ui UI is what draws me into programming. You know, the look and the feel and how things can look so amazing on your phone. So that's what really draws me into programming actually. Now, what is it that I actually like focusing on? <laughs> I'll say animations is pretty interesting because it's hard. Um, I would also say that writing efficient network codes, writing a layer that deals with the network is great. Uh, and then hooking all the network code, controller code and UI code, making sure all that code works together. That's uh, what I like to do as well. Uh, the other interesting part is setting up the server so that you can capture the data that your users send over to your server and you have to store that in a database, making sure that you can fetch that from the database and return it back to the user. That's also another interesting aspect of software development. Um, is there an animation library that I can recommend? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I think that animation is mostly custom. So if you're if you're dealing with animations outside of the realm of like maximizing, minimizing, sliding left and right, you're gonna most likely uh, have to write that stuff yourself. Um, I like how I always have something new to learn. It can be overwhelming, but uh, always having something new to learn is a great motivator every day. Yeah, I would agree. I would tend to agree to that. Mm. Okay, so let's see. What are we gonna do here? All right. Uh, any tutorials about background fetch mode? Probably not. Um, so when I was dealing with the Instagram, no, not Instagram, but the podcast course, I was, uh, so in the podcast course, there's a lesson to actually download the podcast from the iTunes, from the iTunes uh, podcast repository. And so when I was preparing that course, I had to deal with background fetching whenever you background the app. So when you press the home button and, uh, 
if I still have that code somewhere, maybe I can put it up on a podcast course. But essentially what you do is you set up a task. I remember I spent like four or five hours on that particular feature. So you set up a background task and then you make sure that, yeah, it's kind of difficult now that I recall what I did. You set up a URL session, but I believe you do something with where you declare that the task is actually, uh, what do you do? I know you do something with you do something in the app delegate. Mm. Yeah, you do something in the app delegate. I have the source code. Maybe I should pull it up. <laughs> okay. Just my thoughts on onboarding for this library. The app store and Instagram courses did the UI layout programmatically so many times. That makes it a perfect segue to be at ease with LBTA tools. Yes. Yes. So maybe everyone does enjoy watching me do things programmatically. Do, do, do you guys want to see me build a, a collection of view controller yet again? Do you guys mind that? You know, registering a cell, registering a header, dequeuing the cell header, size for item, size for header. Do you guys want to see that? I don't know. I always have this question in my head because I want to do more advanced things, but if I'm wasting my time building out these 50 video long tutorials, uh, courses, I mean, if there are 50 videos and like a majority of it is just setting up UI, I don't, I don't feel like that's, that's entirely like helpful. And there was this one course, I think on the Tinder course, I, I had one lesson where I copied and pasted a huge chunk of code into the, the lesson and a couple of students didn't like that and they wanted to see me do it line by line. Now, I understand that when the code, when you just copy and paste code, that's not a good way of teaching people how to do things. Uh, sometimes you just have to look at code and you have to dissect it yourself. You know, you have to build up that muscle anyways. So, yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll start off the lesson. I'll start off the course where I just kind of build up the momentum for LBTA tools. And then I have to introduce how you build out things. And maybe I can't just jump into using these, uh, these like extension methods right off the bat because it's a little, A little overwhelming. Please update your courses. So the courses are all compatible with Swift 4.2. And uh, it's also 100% backwards uh, forward compatible with Swift 5.0, which means that if you, if you download the source code, you don't have to do anything. It just works out of the box. I might eventually retire the Instagram course and stop selling it. It's still very good value. There's just so much content in there that I don't want to retire it. Idea for avoiding basic stuff. At the start of video, link to start a project with basics done. Uh, link to video explain basics, then dive right into the good stuff for the actual video. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I like that idea. Hmm. 
I like that idea. I think I just need to start testing things out. And um, have to see what happens. Um, the funny thing about the courses on the website is that there are there are thousands of people that take the courses, but nobody seems to leave <laughs> like a lot of comments on the course. Now that means whenever I try to get like feedback or try to get feedback from people that whether or not they think the, the lesson is helpful. I don't know if people don't leave comments. Maybe I can implement a thumbs up, a rating, a review system. <laughs> What's my psycho Luther's? Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate everyone that leaves a comment, whether or not it's good or bad. <laughs> I'm gaining weight. I think I actually lost weight over, over the last month. I think it's this light. Okay. Oh, if you're watching the videos from like three years ago, I definitely gained weight from, from that time. It's not that I'm super self-conscious about my weight, but also I notice when you're standing up and giving a talk while you're upright, you just appear skinnier. That should be obvious to everyone. Uh, do you like hunting for bugs? I weirdly do. I can spend hours trying to make something just work. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's like my entire life here. Um, so I, I really like the comments. But uh, so sometimes I do get comments that I can't respond to because I don't, A, I probably don't have a good answer to your questions and B, the question is so detailed that I would have to give a really, really long response. And sometimes I, I just don't have the time to do that. <laughs> but I read every comment that get, gets posted on both the YouTube channel and also the website. Uh, so Quezzi says, my company is trying to move our entire product onto the Flutter platform. Yeah, could be a good idea. Could be nice if you're, yeah. <laughs> Where is the Discord channel? I don't think I'm going to have a Discord channel. I know I said that I might open one last time, but I, I don't think I'll do it, unfortunately. Can I talk about Flutter? What are the cons? So, I don't know. You tell me what the cons are. I think there are mostly pros. So I guess I'll just say this. Uh, whenever I'm evaluating some kind of technology, whenever I look at it, uh, it's very rare that I look at it from a, a, a negative perspective. And I'll always try to focus on the positives that it brings to the table. So Flutter allows you to uh, write things using the Dart language. Uh, I don't have anything about, like, I don't have a firm stance on the Dart language itself. The thing that I don't really like about Dart is that, maybe it's not Dart, but it's more like Flutter. Whenever you declare these widgets and components within other widgets, it gets really hard to read. So it starts becoming like the code that you saw earlier with the stacking, the H stack and the vertical stacking. The entire code that you write out just ends up looking like that. So I haven't built out a 
production level project with Flutter, but I can imagine if you do, if you're not careful about declaring your widgets as a separate component, then you're going to run into this uh, code base where the entire application is just one long uh, widget file. So if you can avoid that, then I think for the most part, Flutter is is fine. Um, and I think right now they have a lot of libraries and uh, not libraries, but widgets, out of the box native widgets that have the Cupertino iOS flavor and also the material design flavor to it. So if you're coming from the world of React Native where you have to install these third-party libraries for the uh, the native UI kit feel of components, then Flutter supports it out of the box, which is it's good. Uh, should be used instead of something like Xamarin. I don't know. I've never used Xamarin before. Google Maps are not good with Flutter until now. Yep. I think Flutter has been out for, what, two years now? Officially out. So it, it does take time for things to work. I know when I was experimenting with it last year, uh, the keyboard making a show above the notch when the iPhone 10 just came out, it, it didn't support that natively. So it's a little surprising that Google Maps is now finally ready for Flutter, seeing that Google owns the Flutter platform. That, that should be a pretty high priority for them to support it right out of the gates, right? Oh man, Phil Ashaki says, uh, did I ever learn Java Spring or Hibernate? So I never learned Java Spring, but I have experience using Hibernate. So Hibernate is just an ORM, which is an object relation mapping system for databases like uh, MySQL, SQL Server, I guess anything, really. Yeah, I guess it's just a Java library that inter interacts with a persistence layer, like, like a database backend. Man, it's been years since I've actually touched that type of code. Um, it's a little surprising if you're going through your software career and after the span of 10 years, you just look back on all of the different technologies that you've touched. Like for me, it's been Rails, Java, Visual Studio with C Sharp, Objective C, Swift, iOS, Java, Android, some Kotlin here and there. Java server, like some JBoss, and what's the other server called Jetty, all this Java tools, Flash, ActionScript. Man, there's just so many things that you have to deal with. Yeah. As a software engineer, you just have to deal with learning different tools, programming languages, some fade over time when uh, when Flash was like the hip thing that Adobe came out with, it it died out after Steve Jobs didn't want it on the iPhone platform. So you have to advance into like JavaScript, HTML, which as a software developer, you'll most likely have to learn that tool. Not every developer has to learn JavaScript and HTML, but eventually you have to somewhat have to deal with it. But man, yeah, that's a lot of different things that we have to learn. Uh, and that's not even talking about the other tools like Jira, GitHub, Jenkins, Travis, other, other like CI, CD tools. What other job do you have to learn so many different things every day? Is there another job where you're just constantly, constantly uh, reading blog posts about new technologies? 
Like, if you're a doctor, I guess you look at these medical journals and you have to stay up to date with the latest techniques, uh, latest medicine, latest, like, different ways of doing performing surgery, I guess. But I don't think that's to the extent where you have to be, like, a... You have to be a god of software programming to even be really good. Um, is there a chance you'll do a Mac OS app? So I have one Mac OS app. And uh, it's kind of basic. Uh, so Philip says, my work uses core Bluetooth. How hard would that be in Flutter? Much worse, I suspect. Yeah, I would I would suspect you. I, I, I probably don't Flutter probably don't doesn't have native support for Bluetooth. Maybe it does. Uh are any of my apps successful? Uh my personal apps? I don't have any personal apps. Uh the last the last app I built out I think it had like ten million dollars in sales every month. So that was the last company that I worked on, or worked at rather. And I would say ten million dollars every month using the. No wait, I think it was overall uh, total revenue for the company per month was about ten million dollars. iPhone brought in sixty to seventy percent of the revenue. So I would say like six million dollars just going through the iPhone directly, and yeah, every day people um, are buying things on their phone, and getting six million dollars a month is pretty successful. Not like the best in the world, but uh, nothing to be ashamed at either. <laughs> have some serious cash. Uh, yeah, it was that touch of modern. I don't think the company was profitable though. Even though we were generating ten million dollars in revenue every month, I don't know how much of that was actually profit. You'd be surprised at how much money these software tech companies make uh, on a yearly basis and how much is spent on operations and, you know, other things just to keep the company afloat. There's not a lot of money that's made by these tech companies at the end of the day. Uh, once you start working at these companies, you'll see how much pressure that you'll you'll get from the people above telling you to you know, improve the software so that they can make money. It's really funny. <laughs> so Muhammad asked like a really silly question. Do I suggest Flutter or React.js if I had to build out my blog? <laughs> my website blog. So you guys, you guys are going to use Flutter to build out your blog? Okay. That's like one of the more ridiculous things I've heard in the last two weeks. Hello from Kashmir. Hey, man. Man or ma'am. Uh, even many of the largest tech companies aren't profitable. Yeah. Is, uh, is, uh, so Airbnb is profitable. Lyft. Uber, they're profitable. Spotify, are they profitable? People say that Netflix is not profitable yet, which I can understand because they spend so much money on acquiring licensing production for all those Netflix original series. It's not that they want to be profitable either. Like they want to gain market share and the way to do that is to be able to have a lot of shows on their platform. <laughs> so do I play video games? I used to. 
hey, Bobby, Uber and Lyft are not profitable. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to do some research on that. I, I, I haven't heard that they were profitable, so I'm going to assume that they're not profitable. Yeah. Whenever you get hired at one of these startup companies, like small startups are somewhat more profitable because their costs are lower. But eventually they 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 start to expand. And uh all of that venture capital money it gets spent and just trying to acquire users, making sure that your company is providing a service that people want to use and all that takes a lot of money. You'd be surprised at how much money it costs to run a company. Um, yeah, like for myself right now, I am profitable, profitable because I'm only one person. Once they get an HR department, I'm going you probably have an HR department. It's it's like one person right now. Every company has an HR lady or HR guy. Uh, HR is difficult. I think at Touch of Modern, my HR department had three people and they were all really, really nice when I went in to quit my job. I told the HR head that I'm no longer, I don't find myself like, I don't find myself being productive at this company anymore. So. I think I'm going to quit and do my own thing. And then I started my YouTube channel. So at that time, I spent half a year just eating lunch for sometimes two hours and three hours, going back into the office, playing pool at the company game room. And that would be half my day, actually. So I spent half, half a year just doing nothing, basically. So after half a year, I got kind of tired of it, and uh, I, I I wanted to do something else. And so at that time, because my 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 superior, uh, the VP of engineering, he you know everyone knows what's going on. He's like, oh, this person's not that productive anymore, and he tried to assign me onto this the Rails side of the company, trying to do Ruby on Rails, telling me to implement bug fixes for the server. But the way that the server was written, it was really hard to modify the code because it was, it was really hard to understand what the code was doing in the first place. So he told me to do that and I didn't want to. I didn't want to do Rails development or I guess more accurately, I didn't want to touch that Rails code base. Uh, it was written by the CTO, which didn't really have a, like a CS background. So the code was, uh, it was okay. It was hard to modify. That was the problem. So I didn't want to deal with it. So I decided to quit the job because like they also wanted me to do this, this weekly bug fix role. So basically you have this role at a company and they called it a Ronin role where all you do for the entire week is you you sit there and you don't do anything. All you do is you monitor your email. Uh, anytime something goes wrong with the company server, like the website goes down, something is not working correctly, it's your job to address that problem as as quickly as possible. So keep in mind that like I'm not a professional Rails developer, so it's it's out of my comfort zone to have to look through that code. I mean, it didn't really prevent me from fixing bugs, but you know, I wasn't really up to speed on that. So whenever something happened at the company that 
like broke the server in some way, you know, some kind of data entry form wasn't working correctly. And I had to deal with it, right? So you have to look through the code and just dig through so many lines of bad code to figure out how to fix this problem. And when you finally come up with a fix, you, you don't even know if you broke anything because there was no testing and you can't know for sure if it actually works. So you do your code changes and you just pray that you push the fix and it works correctly. Luckily, everything's mostly everything was on uh, internal on the internal website, so it wasn't customer facing, which is always a good thing. And uh, yeah, so they had me do that for a week. It was like this rotating role. One engineer has to stay on this weekly bug tracking role. It was horrible. After like five or six times that I did that maybe like 10 times I just like okay I, I can't do this anymore <laughs> I was hired to develop mobile apps and so once once the mobile apps were very mature the bugs were all taken care of generating sales I was transitioned into doing something else that I didn't like and yeah that's when I decided not to do that anymore Fun times, fun times, fun times. Um, yeah. Tech companies are insanely valuable. Lyft posted a loss of $900 million for 2018. Wow, that's a that's billion dollar in losses. That's insane. I thought they just went IPO. Maybe that's why they decided to go public. They needed the money. Yeah. <laughs> so Philip says, sounds exactly like what I'm about to go through. You know, whenever you get hired at a tech company, the first thing that you have to do is you go through the log of bugs which is always like this super long five page of bugs and bugs and bugs and keep in mind these bugs are the bugs that the current developers don't want to fix because they don't have a good fix for them so they assign you these bugs that are really hard to fix and it's very ambiguous whether or not you should even fix it so that's your first like month or two at a job. Just looking at the, the stuff that no one wants to deal with, unfortunately. Hopefully you're not gonna you know, get into that. But I find that uh, good companies have a very supportive system where they can ramp you up with the projects that are like suitable for the level that you're working at. Yeah, yeah. Those are the companies you want to join. Someone that can guide you through, ramp up your knowledge on the current code base, make sure that you're productive in, what, two to three weeks of time. Mm, yeah, those are the good companies. Hopefully, Philip, you're, you're there. Hopefully. See, Alex he says that uh, that's what you've always been curious. Uh, if a company asks you to do something you literally might not know how to do, how <laughs> to do? Well, learn Rails this weekend then. So if you got hired, like so th I'm just speaking for myself. Uh, I got hired at Touch of Modern to be an iOS developer primarily. Uh, during the interview, I told them that, yeah, I can always, I can also do Android development because mobile just in general is pretty easy. Maybe for me at least. Uh, and I also know like server backend side coding, which, which, you know, means that I can also help out with the Rails side. But when they told me that, okay, you'll now be focusing on Rails for a hundred percent of the time for one week out of the month so that's five days 
out of the 20 days that you're working at, at a company. You have to focus on that thing that you don't know. Uh, yeah. You can either do it, learn it, which I did. I did for like half a year. Or I tried at least. I don't think I did it successfully. And I, if, if you can do it, then I would suggest doing it. Uh, the problem for me at least is that when you're a software developer in the Silicon Valley, there is so much of a demand for your skill set that if you wanted to leave any of these companies, you you can join any software organization. Pretty much, pretty much fifty percent of these companies out here will want you to join their their company if you're good. Right? It's it's a luxury that the software developers have. If you're good, then you're, you're not going to be afraid of not having a job for, for long. So this means you're kind of spoiled. You can kind of be a diva at work. And if you don't want to do something, just say that you don't want to do it. I quit. I can find a job somewhere else. And that happens. But... You know, I tried to be a team player for half a year and just didn't work out for me. I, I got into the mindset of waking up really late at 10 a.m. in the morning, getting to the office at 11, just so that I can avoid that role, and then leaving work at, what, 5.30? So that's what I did for half a year. Trying to be a team player, but failing at it. And... Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened at other companies also. Yeah. Okay, so I think I've talked about myself for a little bit too long. Maybe half an hour longer than I intended to. Um, it was a good time. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what I want to do with LBTA tools just yet. Uh, I have all of the documentation. All of it's written on uh, the GitHub repository at uh, github.com slash B-H-L-V-O-N-G slash LBTA tools. So if you want to read the docs for how that works, then, uh, yeah, just go ahead and look at it. There's an example project on how to set up a list controller. And for the most part, Everything's kind of well documented. I might edit it with a couple of more things that I want to be more explicit on, but um, I might eventually just stick with using this library so that I can speed things up. Hopefully, yeah, I'll try that out for one course, and if people hate it, I'll I'll revert back to doing everything. Uh, with UI kit and try to avoid this generic list thing. Which, let's be honest, you guys have to learn anyways. Or you guys should learn at the very least. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Junaid. Junaid, Junaid. Uh, I know you've been a long supporter of the channel, so you want to say do something for those who have very low currency in the country. I bought your two courses and I want to buy more, but $60 is equivalent to 8.3K. Yes. Oh, Junaid. Hunaid. Khan. Mr. Khan. Mm. Mm. Edwin Paz. I bought the app store grid. Hopefully you were able to make use of it. The code is helpful. Maybe I'll, like I said, I'll just release code. I'll just sell, I'll just sell source code and people will have to look at it themselves. Maybe that's a better thing to do. <laughs> Tech Luther says, I have bought six of the courses. Oh my God. Thank you, Tech Luther's. I don't know what your username is on the website, but I certainly hope. Certainly hope that 
you continue. Yeah. So, uh, why do I only use MVC and not try MV, MVVM or MVP? Uh, that's a good question. It's mostly because uh, I think introducing the MVVM layer is like another abstraction layer that I'm not ready to teach. So I don't know the best practices with MVVM, unfortunately. I know how it's built out and I know what it looks like, but I, I can't say I'm the best person to teach it. Yeah, so sometimes I do wish that I could go back into the software development world and work on a like a super large project that allows me to explore what other libraries and patterns and what other tool sets people are using. That's the thing that I miss the most about uh, software development because Building out the code by myself, I can only do so much. And I, I I still need to be exposed. I need to expose myself to a lot of the tools that other people are using. That would be awesome. So let's see, show this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that was in like Spanish. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, you need a Mac of some sort. Mr. Line, can I learn iOS development on uh, Linux? You can technically learn anything as long as you're watching a video. You can rent these cloud machines that serve as a Mac. Uh, so Alex, see the source code would be cheaper. I think I might sell the source code for like, I don't know, 30 to $40 to make it make sense. Cause even though I spend a lot of time on the videos, I still spend a lot of times on the source code. The difference is I would have to document the source code myself and that would take a lot of time. Yeah. I'm kind of going back and forth on, on that idea. Did I go to this college for software development or computer science? I went for neither. I have an applied mathematics degree. Uh, if, so I was talking to a student the other day, yesterday, yesterday. And whenever I talk to college students, it always surprises me on how how much emphasis they put on college. Maybe I was like that too. Like thinking that college is the most important thing in the world because it consumes your everyday life. But once you graduate college, you realize that these these engineering degrees make like, they're not even that useful. Because honestly, these, these degrees that you get, even the engineering ones are mostly useless. And the reason why they're so useless is because the professor doesn't even teach you all that much. You spend your time reading a book. I think nowadays you spend your time watching videos. You can learn all you can just watching videos online. The only thing that the degree is helpful for is when you apply for your first job and you want to signal that you went to a prestigious college. That's, that's 90, maybe 80% of the value of going to an engineering program. That's, that's all it's good for. 
Because you, you, once you're out of college, you'll meet people that study computer science that absolutely don't know how to search for a solution on, on google.com. You'll find plenty of those. And, uh, I don't know, I think it just goes to show you that I think most of the software developers in the industry right now, they were bound to be software developers no matter what, because they, they had already learned how to code on their own. Yeah, I don't know. That's a different topic for a different day. Yeah. You learn the most from YouTube now. <laughs> Phillips is indoctrination centers that put you in debt, slavery. No thanks. Yeah. So thank you. No problem. <laughs> okay. So Sky Media. So this is the typical question that you get from people that don't know how to program. So Sky Media says, here's a perfect example of people that go to college. And like, I don't wanna roast you, but here's a perfect example of someone that doesn't know what to do in, in life. So they say, I wanna learn Flutter. Can you break things down, like way down in a tutorial explaining a lot about Flutter for beginners? Would it really appreciate it? So I understand the question. Uh, uh, what do I want to say about this? So I guess not everyone's like me. I'm not trying to be like bragging or anything, but it's like 90% of 95% of professional developers don't have someone teaching them how to do something. You go into the programming world and you find the guy that sits next to you he just learns everything on his own no one's like oh yeah let me sit down here and teach you how to do this that doesn't happen so people that go to school they want to be they want to sit there they, here's here's the mentality of someone that goes to school i'll pay a university money thousands and thousands of my dollars that i don't have i borrow it from a bank I'll pay you this money now so that I can sit inside of this room and you force this knowledge into my head. And that doesn't work. That's not even how learning ha occurs. The way learning happens is you find a problem and you don't know how to solve it. You find the solution somewhere and then you apply the fix. That's what real learning is. You don't go to this classroom and just sit there and listen to this professor like tell you something so if you're part of that mindset you need to wake up because you know i get really tired of people just being really stupid i think the the thing that i hate most or i don't know if it's a flaw but i get really impatient with people that are, that are just really slow People that are slow, I, I can't deal with. I can't. I just can't deal with people that are slow. And I think it's gotten worse over over time. As I get older, as I get older, when I meet people that are just really dumb, I get really impatient. I used to be more forgiving back in the days. And I still am. When people are young, when, when students come up to me and they ask questions, I... I I'm pretty forgiving, but when someone's like 25 and older and they ask questions like, oh, can you, can you break this down into small, simple steps for me so that I can learn it? That really gets to me because it's all available on the internet. Just Google it. It's two seconds away. You, you need someone to help you Google too. Is that what you're asking people to do? Google stuff for you? I know that's kind of a rant, but uh, it's uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you meet people that want to spoon feed. 
they want you to spoon feed them. And whenever they encounter a problem, they can't solve it themselves. It's like, what, what the, what's the point of having you here? You're just dead weight, right? No one likes dead weight. Yeah. Literally, Google is just two seconds away. You Google the thing until you find the solution. It's, that's what makes the world spin. If, if people can't understand that by now, you, you have to, you can't be a software engineer if you can't learn how to find the solution yourself. That's, unfortunately, that's the way things, things are right now. Uh, Hassan says that, just want to thank you for everything you have done here in the channel. I'm a senior engineer uh, with all the gratitude. Yeah, thanks, man. Flash Couture is too new. <laughs> I relate. Hey, Dylan, what's going on, man? Dylan Israel in the house. So if you guys don't know, Dylan is the proud owner of the Coding Tutorial 360 channel, uh, previously known. So Dylan, I was watching your channel the other day, and I remember you had this video about you quitting college. You, we had this talk, man. Remember we had this talk about how you going to college was not the thing to do, but you went ahead and did it anyways. And you came to the realization that you didn't like college because all that you had known, like you learned how to program on your own. You're not going to learn that in college, man. You're, you're already surpassed what college is able to teach you. So going there and getting your degree, I know, I know that getting your degree and saying that you graduated with a computer degree computer science degree is, is there's something to that but going back to college was not the thing to do <laughs> best you're right best $3,500 I have I ever spent eliminating any doubt yeah I'm glad that I'm glad that you got that out of your system though because I know there's always things in life that choose at you there's always something that Oh, I wished I had done that differently 10 years ago and I can make up for it right now. I'll just do it. So I'm glad that's no longer something that is in your head. It happens. But yeah, like you far surpassed what college is able to even like show you, let alone teach you. The moment that you you figured out oh, Google is literally the solution for all my problems, then you realize that, oh, college is just useless. <laughs> Stanford. Uh, I heard of Stanford's CS degree. I graduate with 4.0 GPA, can't code for a living. I've heard the same, but I can't confirm that. There were a couple of Stanford grads at my previous company, and they're no longer software engineers. So maybe there's some truth to that. Wide generalization, but I'll make it. I think we know who the one thumb down is, Mr. Google it for me. Uh, listening to your live stream. I wouldn't be surprised. I've interviewed plenty of people who can't write a for loop with a CS degree. Yeah. Having like been an instructor for multiple times, you can very quickly tell the moment someone opens their mouth about, about a problem that they're experiencing. Like they, they start their question asking the most irrelevant thing to what they're trying to solve. And you, you quickly realize, oh, you can't break down this problem in a way that makes it easy to solve. 
then there's uh, there's a lot of things that we have to deal with first before we can figure out the right code to, to fix your programming issues. You know, you meet plenty of those people. And the thing with CS programs is I don't think there's a testing requirement. Anybody can be a CS uh, major. I think anybody can apply for a CS graduate degree also. Yeah, I don't I don't think the school system's going to deny you. They're not going to say, "Oh no, we don't want your money." Yeah, schools don't do that. That's that's how you know there's uh, they're not really in it to to teach you. It's a business. Yeah, I think I've said this before, but if we can take down the entire school system with this channel, just with YouTube and the Let's Build That App channel, we can take down, take down the entire education system, at least for software development. That'd be great. I can see that happening. Uh, I'd like you to talk about Fastlane. Do you want to do that? The YouTube University. You know, um, so I was talking to someone, well, last year I had this interview set up. I actually did the interview, but I never edited the videos together. But there was a student, his name is Tom, and hello Tom if you're listening. And he, uh, he got, he got a WWDC scholarship as, I think he's like 16. And all he did was just watch my YouTube videos and other people's online content, and he was able to get the scholarship. So that says a lot, right? You don't need education from an institution in 2019. Heck, I would go as far to say that the education system, like an actual institution, is really holding you back. Because you're spending, there's a lot of overhead having to sit inside of classroom, like commuting to your school, sitting down, other people slacking off, holding back the entire class. That's a lot of overhead that you have to deal with, right? So I would say going to school is a waste of time for most people. If you're really smart, then going to school is just, eh. I can't say that going to school is, like there's a lot of good things about going to school, but if you're trying to f get the most out of yourself, you can spend four years just learning so fast, so quickly, if you know what to learn. And that's kind of the problem with the internet. You have to be able to search for the things correctly. And if you're young, you don't even know what you don't know yet. That's, that's the problem with when you're young. But when you go to college, you still, you still don't know what you don't know. That's another problem. Uh, LBTA, public enemy, <laughs> public enemy number one for CS programs everywhere. Um, it's kind of funny because I've been doing this for three years that people will reach out and, and tell me that the school uses these videos, like schools will use this video, instructors will teach their content based on having watched these videos. So slowly, slowly instructors, like students that have started iOS development from this channel, like it's only three years old, right? You can, extrapolate this to five to 10 years from now. And those instructors in those universities will have grown up on watching YouTube online tutorial videos. And that's scary thought to, to, to know that you can make that kind of impact. Yeah. Yeah, the other day I had this friend, an uh, online friend, I guess, and he said that his instructor was uh, like, he basically learned everything off the, this YouTube channel here. 
community college instructor. Mm. So it's, it's already happening. The online education system is, is beginning. It's like we're just in the infancy of this entire uh, overhaul. I don't know if we can call it overhaul yet. I think people need to wake up. That's the thing. Once everyone starts to wake up and realize this whole whole thing that we're all part of, it's like a societal problem because we all want to encourage people to go to school, even though we don't know truly what the point of it is. You know, 90% of us going to university is just because everyone else is doing it. So maybe that's why I had such a bad time at college. I had already known that there was stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, am I accepting student app review applications on Facebook? Yeah, if you want to submit something into the Facebook group, do post a post, uh, make a post, and I'll try to get to it. Tida uh, I should tell you something. If if you go to school for 12 years and you don't learn how to manage a checkbook or how combat interests work or how to apply for a mortgage, insane. Oh, yeah, wow, what the goals Oh, 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 okay. I have a nice overview of everything. Yeah. I don't I don't think I have a nice overview for people that are just learning Swift. And that's purposeful. I'll I'll keep saying this, but I hate teaching beginners. I used to get these students that um would would book a one hour session like one on one coding sessions and it would be through screen sharing and webcam and you know just Skype hangout or Skype hangout Google hangout and I just couldn't help these people I couldn't help these beginners at all because it was it was hard for me if I have to teach someone how to build a button, then uh, I'd rather just kill myself. Just shoot me now. If I have to teach you how to write UI button equals UI button, <laughs> set title on button and type out that code. Just like, oh God, just kill me now. Uh, have I tried? Others uh, try selling my tutorials on other platforms like Udemy, Udacity, and Coursera. So three years ago, uh, before I started out this channel, I applied to be a Udemy instructor. I got my sample video approved and I was like ready. I was ready to start selling my courses on Udemy and, and try to make a profit. The Udacity owner, the CEO of Udacity, and I think the VP of marketing or some guy, we went out to coffee in San Francisco and we had a meeting for like two hours and they wanted me to teach on their platform. We we're going to collaborate with the Pinterest uh, UX team, one designer from Pinterest, and they were going to offer me this recording studio inside of their Mountain View offices where I can just go there and do the video recording, have their professional setup, and get things done there. 
So all that was in the works. But with Udacity, they never told me what the, the rev split, the revenue split was gonna be. I was not informed of how things were going to take place. So that never really materialized into anything. Maybe it was my fault. Probably it was my fault because I was so busy with this YouTube channel anyways that uh, the Udacity plan just fell through. Fell through? Fell through the cracks? Fell through. <laughs> um, Coursera, I never really looked into. I know a lot of people have good things to say about Coursera, so if, if you find some good courses on that platform, how's it go for it? Uh, a lot of people are pirating my stuff on udemy.com. So if you find myself, if you find a professor on Udemy going by the name of Brian Vung, uh, that's not me. That is not me. So uh, the thing about Udemy is I don't know if they refund you for your courses, but I have filed a takedown for two courses right now and they taken down the course. So if they take it down, if they refund you, then that's good. If they don't refund you, then I don't know what happens with your money. So be very careful. Uh, I'll never put my courses on anything other than letsbuildthatapp.com. And things are working nicely on the website. I have no complaints about anything right now. Like you, the users are so awesome in the support that like you guys just show me so much support. It's it's amazing. You know, I'm I, I get to live in a fairly comfortable place right now. Maybe I'll do a, an apartment tour for you guys, even though it's, it's so empty here. I have this this condo that's super empty. I wanted to set up this whole recording studio on the top floor and do all this stuff, but Oh man, I don't know. I can go on and on about how lazy I am. <laughs> yeah. So you just got an iOS internship. So I know uh I know a developer at Udemy that was working on the iOS team. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll you'll meet Sam. So if you meet Sam at Udemy on the iOS team, tell him I said hi, Alex. His name is Sam. We'll see. We'll say. We'll see. You. Yeah. He was my um, he was my boot camp student when I was an instructor at a boot camp. Smart guy. Really nice. Really. Yes. Sam will see. Super nice, like so, so easygoing and so friendly. I love it when I meet people that are like super, super friendly like that because I'm like super awkward when I meet people in, in real life. I don't know what to say with, <laughs> with actual people. So like Sam makes it really easy to just be relaxed and chill. Uh, brand new yet. Another fellow Brian, Lagunitas for the win. So this was my last bottle. If you guys have any recommendation for beer that I can buy in the United States, that's actually good. I'm gonna head out. Oh man, I went to Lucky's yesterday. And I was gonna buy another uh, pack of beer, but let me know what you want to see me uh, imbibe for the next stream, and I'll go out and grab it. Lucky's has like a, such a large selection. And there's a, oh man, there's a, like a beer, there's a wine. What do you call these stores that only sell wine and beer? It's like a, the drinking store, I think it's called. So maybe I'll head down there and pick up a nice bottle of wine or something. Uh, so any bootcamp student is, is at, at Amazon, Apple, or Google. So I have two of my bootcamp students working at Facebook right now. Um, another... A fellow, my assistant, is now working at DoorDash. And I think someone else is working at a fairly well-known company. 
Mm. Yeah. I can't say that I uh, was like a huge part in their success, but like they were really smart people to begin with. Yeah, these students were really, just really smart. So there's two at Facebook, one at Udemy. Uh, the assistant is working at DoorDash. There's gotta be a, another couple of people too. I think someone else is working at Slack. No, I think he had an interview at Slack <laughs> or ThoughtBot or something like that. So they're not, they're all, they're all doing like super well, which is amazing. Get a beer company and sponsor you. If I drink beer every day on this channel, every video that I do, I'll have like a bottle of beer. Maybe I'll just like fill the back with a, a shelf of empty bottles. That'd be an interesting idea actually. <laughs> oh man, the Raptors game. Did you guys watch the Golden State Warriors versus the Houston Rockets game yesterday? Oh my God, so amazing. It was like, oh no, Kevin Durant is down. What do we do? What do we do? <laughs> All right, see you later, Jason. It's good to have you, man. It was good having you. Oh, so the Warriors now have two more games to win on this Houston series. Uh, so Bobby says, I did well at Fitbit with a lot of Swift. I learned from watching YouTube videos at the previous job. Now I'm at Salesforce. That's nice. Very nice. Any impact at all is good. Yeah. Tao Li Man. Has there been any update on KD? So they're uh, doing their MRR tonight. Or is it tomorrow? They said they were going to have the MRR, MRI today. And I don't know if Kevin Durant's going to come back at all for this postseason. So when I saw that injury from Kevin Durant yesterday, I uh, was quickly reminded of the exact same injury that I had. So I, I know exactly what that feels like and it's definitely a calf sprain. I don't think it's an Achilles. I've never torn my Achilles in my leg like that, but what he experienced and what I saw was the calf sprain that I had. And my calf sprain actually healed in like two to three weeks. I was ready to go on the basketball courts right, right again. So if it's like, so he was, his, his sprain was even, it was actually better than my sprain. He was able to walk all the way to the locker room, like almost like he just sprained his ankle. When I had my calf sprain, I could barely step on that same leg, that same foot. And I was hobbling on one leg for a week. He was able to like walk, literally just walk back to the locker room. I don't think it was that bad. I mean, I hope, I hope I'm right. If I'm wrong, then, you know, the entire postseason, Curry, uh, Curry, Clay, everyone's gonna have to step up. But man, it's gonna be fun. Probably the adrenaline is what pushed him. I, man, I hope not. I, I hope it's not as bad. But, you know, there's, I know if, if you've been watching basketball for a long time and you've been following the Warriors, there's a part of us that actually wants to see what the, what the team is capable of without Kevin Durant on the court. I'm, like, I'm sure a lot of us want to see what the Warriors can do without KD, right? We want to see what we can prove. You watch what we did after the KD injury. It's like, oh yeah, we're actually pretty good. And before we had him on the team, we're pretty decent. So, uh, have I ever used uh, IG list kit? I looked at the documentation a lot. Not, not a lot, but actually, I never actually used it. I know they have this very same, uh, they have the same perception of like using some easy way for collection views to be rendered out. 
And I think they, they have like a diffing process in their rendering pass that allows it to be more efficient. Uh, I'd be curious if you did a speed test on um, FPS versus texture, fabric, texture, uh, formerly known as, formerly known as, what is texture be formerly known as? Uh, whatever that Facebook library is called. That's a brand. What, what, what a nice brand of chair for us developers, you know. Good elbow rest, extra comfortable. People would spend more than 60 hours a day. I think I spend, let's see, I wake up at 9. I get a, I get on this chair at 9.30. And then I, I sit in this chair for the entire day. And I get off at like 10, 11. Man, that's a long time. Uh, yeah, I think any chair that you find comfortable is totally worth it. The one that I have right now is all right. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think I said I was going to, wow, I was going to sign off like two hours ago or one hour ago. And here we are, two hours and 21 minutes into the stream. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to learn something about LBTA tools in today's video. I'm gonna, well, it's four o'clock. I'm gonna have some, maybe some dinner right now. And then I'll see you guys next week. Hope this was fun. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week. It is Mother's Day, so I will try to buy something for my mom. But can your chair do this? Let's see how far I can go. I'm scared. I'm actually very... I'm like a big pussy about leaning back on chairs. I don't know why. I get, I like my entire body just shakes sometimes when, when it goes too far back that I'm not expecting. I get, I get turn into this big bitch, a big baby bitch. Uh, I should do this more often, maybe. One week is, uh, once a week is a little bit too much for me. I don't know what to talk about most of the time when I'm doing these dreams. But yeah, um, I'll, I'll do one like every two weeks. And I'll, I'll try to check up with you guys on what you're doing. So thank you again. And I'll see you next time, guys. This is uh, an ASMR channel now. Hopefully you guys like ASMR. Because that's what it's going to be. ASMR teaching you guys how to build out an app. That would be amazing. ASMR LBTA. How to build the latest website. Live stream your sleep. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys later. Bye.